Well, this is, <laughs> dang it. I can't, uh, I can't even get through that without laughing every time. All right. This is the Logo Centrifugal Podcast. I am Chance Lunsford. I am Logo Centrifugal. I'm here with my guest, Adonis. What up, dude? Tell us a little bit about yourself. How's it going? Um, <clears throat> my name's Adonis. Um, well, contrary to popular belief, people see my tweets and think I'm older. People see my face and think I'm younger. But I'm 22. Uh, I was born and raised in Philly. As of right now, I'm a freelance uh, copywriter, and I also um, in the business doing like graphic design and web design and, and mar digital marketing and things like that for businesses, uh, business to business services. Um, doing that more locally right now, trying to branch out. Then I'm also doing uh, dabbling in uh, Shopify and e-commerce and things like that. So I'm kind of trying to do a lot right now, but you know I'm trying to get a lot of it. <laughs> not necessarily done, but I'm trying to start and figure out what works for me and what things I can scale while I'm younger so that when I do get older, all I really have to focus on is, is maintaining and management. And, you know, actually, I don't really have to do too much expanding, like, when I get older, because I did a lot of that when I was younger and got places, got things to where I wanted them to be. Nice. So you said... um that you feel like you're kind of taking on a lot right now. And I wonder, is this a situation where like you're, you're experimenting with a lot of stuff and trying to find something that sticks or are you at the point where you found a lot of the things that you want to do and now you're kind of diving into a bunch of them and trying to develop those paths that you're heading down? Um, probably more of the latter, uh, around, around, uh, probably around this time and like a few months later down the line this year was probably the time where I was just getting into or re revisiting and finding new ideas and things like that through you know the make money online corner of Twitter like I had knew about uh, like copywriting and digital marketing a few years ago but I wasn't that heavy into it but last year I found things like you know freelance direct response copywriting uh, Shopify dropship things like that so it it started out as me trying to get into new fields and figure out what works for me and what I would like to do and things like that. But now it's gotten to the point where I've kind of identified all of that. And yeah, like you said, I'm kind of just diving full force into it so that I can, you know, figure out exact, figure out which is going to work for me in the long term and which is just working for me right now. And then whichever one is the one that I'm best at and, you know, that I can scale to the best of my abilities and things like that is the one I'm going to focus on the most. So we're kind of talking right now about getting rolling on some of this stuff and you've had some success and, you know, I've been following you for a while and the way that you're able to, I mean, you're very good at talking like you're talking to me now in the way that you write, which is appealing. And you talk about these successes that you've had and these failures that you had, and you always try to flip it so that there's a positive and that's, you know, I appreciate about that you or, that about you um and i guess i am that's part of the reason i invited you on here is because i'm trying to head in similar paths not necessarily in the same direction as you because i have other vehicles but i'm trying to learn about this marketing and i'm trying to learn about um, copywriting and i'm trying to learn about some of these things that i can use to leverage what i'm trying to do so i like you said you're trying to see which one might work the best for you and, and really focus in on that one. But where are you trying to get beyond doing what you're doing right now? Like what's working for you? What are you working towards in the future? What's your big vision? Um, well, I kind of have my uh, steps planned out kind of, kind of weirdly. Like I have it planned out where if I'm going along the path and something ends up not working, I can, throw that to the side for a second and keep going with what I'm doing. So like, um, as of right now, my plans for this year, mainly um, trying to establish this uh, digital marketing agency, the one that I was talking about. Um, I actually um, have been recently getting more successful with, you know, client outreach for copywriting. So between the, the, the copywriting and the, you know, the clients that I get through the digital marketing and the web design and hosting and all of those kind of things, I'm going to use that and expand both of those while also, because 
the 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 Shopify thing and the branding thing that 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 actually is very interesting to me because of my views and marketing and selling the things to people and you know things like that. So that's actually a lane that I really am interested in. But at the same time, I have to build the forms of income first to be able to put the time in and money that's required into that. Because as you know, it's not something that you could just throw up a store and just post some links on Craigslist or something like that and get sales. It's definitely a, a, an intricate process. I think I used that word right. And the, the thing about a lot of this that when it comes to like marketing and, and things like that, that a lot of people don't understand, and I'll talk about this a lot, it's really, you don't understand how people think and how people work and why they do the things they do, then you're really going to be low. It's a lot more psychological than people think, because at the end of the day, no matter what you're selling, no matter who you're trying to sell it to, whether you're trying to sell it to a franchise, a corporation, a small business, at the end of the day, you're selling to a person. There's not, you're not selling to, to AI or robots or inspector gadget. You're selling to a person. So if you know how to identify what makes people tick, why people do what they do, why they think what they think, why they spend money on the things they spend money on and things like that, it's going to make you more successful when it comes to trying to market and sell things to people rather than just looking into it. Because when I first started off, I was one of the people where I paid a lot of attention to, or I, I spent a lot of time researching the processes and the methods and the specific things that people did. But what I found was you can copy what other people are doing, but if you don't understand the reasoning behind why they're doing it and the reason behind why people are responsive to it, then you're just going to end up, you know, being a copycat and that's not really going to get you too far. Yeah, man, I feel that, you know, there's a certain, I mean, there's levels of development. So for example, um, let's say it is copywriting, you know, you, you stumble onto this thing and it catches your interest and you say to yourself, you know, I've been reading these things, these scroll down internet copy messages my whole life basically, or, you know, for, in my case, since I was, you know, whatever, 15 and they started having stuff like this, but you read it, you know, and it's, oh, this is bold and this is red colored and look, here's some parentheses and stuff and here's a bullet list and you, and you, you know, you recognize, you're like, oh, I'm being sold something right now. And then you get to the bottom, you're like, yeah, I, I either want it or I don't. I want it to, you know. Mm -hmm. And then at a certain point, your brain clicks and you go, well, I have stuff that I want to sell. You know, I have services or I have products or I want to get myself out there and create opportunity. So you start going for it. And then you realize, man, I'm very clunky at marketing myself. I'm, I'm used to selling other people. And even if you've been in sales, when you, when you turn around and start selling yourself, it's like, well, this is, this is a bit different. Uh, you know, it's like everything I'm saying is constantly a job interview if I'm trying to market myself. And it changes your mentality. So you go, how, how do I get good at it? And then you do start copying it first, you know? So, oh, uh, this is how you might do bullet points. This is how you catch people's eyes on specific things. These are the techniques. And then you get all caught up in the technique. And you're like, oh, I'm going to put all the techniques in this paragraph, and this is going to be incredible. And then, and then you still fail at it and go, well, let me look at something side by side and you go and you look at something you bought and then you look at what you wrote and go, Oh, I'm being a big dork right here. This is, this is so bad. <laughs> it's, it's like, clearly I was just doing exactly what I was just doing. I'm just trying to like use all the tricks I know how to use. And then you get a little bit of class and development and then you start going, Oh, okay. Like I have to have a voice. I have to be able to relate to people. I have to talk to them in a way that already fits within their own levels in their own life. So that means I have to understand what their lives are like and who they are and how people work. What are the things that I can connect to that are relevant to what I'm trying to sell them? And how do I best get that in, into their heads and into their hearts so that they want to invest in me? And then finally you get to the point where you go, oh, that's some powerful stuff. And now that I'm starting to understand it, I really need to be genuine right here or I'm going to turn evil because I'm going to be brainwashing people for their money. And that, so... I guess after that long rant, I wonder what are the challenges that you've faced between starting to understand the power of marketing and getting inside people's heads versus I need to be true to Adonis and make sure that I'm living by a code or some principles so that I don't abuse people and, and suffer the consequences of that down the road. It's interesting that you bring that up because I kind of just had a thought like that on my mind. Like when you talked about people selling themselves and it's kind of come to, to, to mind with the whole, um, you know, influx of personal branding people have been trying to do lately. And it's like, at the end of the day, 
I feel like when it comes to people trying to sell themselves and people trying to, you know, sell their services and their knowledge and things like that, uh, I feel like they're, and I'm not like specifically calling anybody out or thinking of anybody in particular here, but I feel like some people get into the point where they're so focused on selling themselves as who they think they are or who they want to be that it it fails to become genuine and they're not really selling themselves as who they are. Like if someone is able to watch you experience uh, success and failure and, and highs and lows and, and things like that and really watch you get to the point where you are and they, you know, went through the whole role with you and experienced the highs and lows and you were a genuine person behind it. That's going to, that's going to make people view you as more authentic than they will if you're just the person where you only show off the highlights and, and you know, your, your, your slam dunks and your, 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 uh, your crossovers. That's the only thing that anybody ever sees, but nobody ever sees when you're in the gym and you missing shots and when you miss the buzzer beater at the end of the game. If, if nobody ever sees what you can do wrong and you try to convince people to, you try to convince people that you can't do anything wrong and that you're just some, you know, perfect creature and da 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 da. And then that's gonna that's gonna come off as very inauthentic to people because it's just gonna be like, well, everybody knows that humans have flaws and we all make mistakes and we all have things that you know we need to work on. And if you're trying to go around and make it seem like, oh well, I'm the perfect being and I do such and such and blah 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 every day, and 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 sometimes it comes off as real pretentious and condescending. And it's like, I don't know if I'm just not at the level yet where having that type of, you know, that type of, uh, having that type of cash inflow and, and, you know, things like that, being able to do everything that I want to do whenever I want to do it. I don't know if that would affect my ego. I, I'm, I mean, I'm genuinely a humble person, so I wouldn't even be on tight time. But I just wonder if that, if people realize that by them doing that and then you know getting more money and starting to act more pretentious and kind of sending it blah blah if people realize that it makes them look really like they're trying to be other people because it, it really just looks like the rich guy stereotype at the end of the day when you go around saying like I, I think i said this like a week or two ago on twitter nobody that's really happy just goes around just putting other people down just <laughs> Like, if you're really doing that, you're on a low level and you're just trying to bring people down to the, the miserable low level that you're on. Because if you have things going for you in life and you have things that you need to focus on and you're happy and things are going well for you, what the fuck are you doing? Why do you, how do you have the type of energy to go around just fucking with people and just, you know, putting people down and, and talking shit to people for no reason? Like, I understand if you're attacked and people are coming at you and you're just trying to express your opinions and people are oh well you're a piece of shit for thinking that that's one thing but some people genuinely just just get a fucking blimp hit and it's just like what is the point of you doing all of this and then you're going to drive people away and then you're going to start trying to act crazy towards them because they aren't fucking with you no more because they realize that your vibe is weak like it's just at the point where i hope people don't let the whole idea and the whole uh you know the whole thing of personal branding blowing up make people get to the point where they start really trying to portray, portray themselves as who they want to be and who they think they are in their head and not actually who they are and what they do and things like that and that's kind of why i stepped back from from some of the stuff that i was seeing and some of the stuff that i was doing because it got to the point where i was starting to feel like am i really representing me and who i am right now or who adonis wants to be in the future and it's like if I'm t if I'm acting like future Adonis, but I'm not there yet, then why would you pay me any mind if I'm not even like that's inauthentic in my in my point of view? Yeah, man. There's a thing. There's a balance every person has to discover, I think, and it's weird on Twitter because people are there for different reasons too. You know, the timeline is a strange place. The DMs get a little bit different. But, you know, the timeline, like, here's a person who's just being a person. Here's a person who just only retweets other stuff. Here's a person who's being just nothing but a brand. There's, there's like, it's a caricature of themselves, and they stick to the script. And then here's a person who is some blend of those things, half, half brand, half normal person. You know, and then here's all these people with these different mixes of this stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, like, when you, let's say... For example, you're following someone like uh, Ed Lattimore or you're following someone like Ivan Throne or you're following someone like Cortez. 
you begin to discover pretty soon like this timeline version of these people it's not exactly who they are it's it's what they do because twitter has become a business for them and it became a business because of who they are so there's still things about them that are in there but it's it has become like an advertisement or a caricature and then you get to know them behind the scenes a little bit even just one step back like if you even if you dm one of these guys and you say hey how's it going you know my name is chance and uh I I have this to say about something you said. They go, oh well, here's my real person voice, and I'm just talking to you now, and I'm just like everybody else, you know. And you start to see, but then there's other people where, like, they say something obviously controversial, and it's, and like it's it's just obviously one of those things that's designed to piss people off. And then maybe you DM afterwards and you say, hey, you know, that was, um, I think I see what you did there. And it's interesting what happened to people after you said that. And then they come at you with another one of those things, just like sticking to the script, even when you're trying to connect with them as a person and go, oh, okay, this person's full of shit and I can see that. So I, that's not really what I'm trying to do. You can tell when somebody is wearing a mask versus them being an actual person. And it's funny because all the, everybody's trying to, to be certain types of people nowadays is making it really easy to see like, who's genuine and authentic versus who's just wearing a mask just so that they can be who they, who they want people to think they are. Yeah. And you know, I, in my particular situation, um, I wear a lot of masks on Twitter and I try to, I try to, like I tell people what I'm doing too. That's one of the things like, you might not know exactly who I am, uh, cause I'm, I play a lot of roles on there, but I'm telling you what I'm doing. You know, like sometimes I'll even literally say, I'm putting on this mask today and then I'll start fucking around with people <laughs> and, and play the a character. The difference with you is when you do things like that and you play characters and stuff, you do it just fucking around. You do it to be funny and to entertain people. But some people really like fool themselves into believing that they're like some kind of alpha gorilla, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like you you're not like it's so funny and this is just, even with just regular people it's so funny how people go on the internet and put on the mask and they, they turn jim carrey and it's just like you you know that <laughs> as soon as you get from behind the screen that's not how you are it's, it's really telling <laughs> definitely like uh, it's just like it's just like they put on the mask and they just just like just like that movie. That movie is a perfect metaphor for how people act. Put on that joint, they start acting crazy. They start forgetting rules, regulations, uh, principles, all of that. As long as <laughs> there's it some. No, I was about to say as long as it makes them some kind of some kind of profit or some kind of happy, and, and some people don't care about whether they being real, whether they being fake, a mixture of both. It's just ridiculous. I was just going to say there's this line in that movie um, and it's from Ben Stein, the clear eyes guy. And Jim Carrey immediately mocks it too. And Ben Stein says, <laughs> we're all wearing masks, metaphorically speaking. And then Jim Carrey, or Jim Carrey immediately goes, we're all wearing masks, metaphorically speaking. <laughs> yeah, that shit is stuck in my head for life. And it's funny. I mean, it's so funny how it's such a big slapstick joke because of the way that Jim Carrey does it. Mm -hmm. But it's so true. You see that, you know, I've thought about that my whole life because that line is stuck in my head so readily, but it's like, who are you pretending to be? And then if you look a little deeper, it's like, Oh, I see you in there. I see how you're scared to let your real self out. So you put this thing up here to, as a buffer between you and the world. But you know, it's like, I get that, but you should pick your masks carefully because you become who you pretend to be. Or you become, you know, like, if you or think you a certain way, you. yeah, you act a certain way, you become a certain way. You are how you act. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter who you think you are. It matters how you act. Yeah, because a lot of people, they think they're a certain type of person and they think such and such and blah, blah. And then you really get to talk to them and you're like, you you, you really don't espouse any of these traits or keep, like, actions speak louder than words when it comes to people. And a lot of people, they'll say such and such and blah, blah. And then... You can tell from the things that they do, or at least the things that they say they do, that it's just like, are are you sure? Like, you sure you aren't getting yourself confused with somebody else there, Bucko? Uh, 
it's just really and I don't even mean to, to, to be talking about people a lot and da 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 because I'm not one of the kind of people where I just go around hating on people and, and trying to bring people down. But it's like at the same time I just I just feel like people should and I don't it's and I, it's not too many people in the in the space that I like have met outside of Twitter to really know them and, and stuff like that. But you could tell from the way that certain people act that it's just like, come on, bro, be more authentic, like be more you, like to like for an example, my guy uh, TJ TJ the Science guy, you, I'm sure you know him. He's one of the most authentic people I feel like on Twitter because besides all of you know him trying to teach people and and doing all the science stuff and things like that, he genuinely just says what he wants and, and you mean is just the kind of person where he does you know the things that he wants to do and he's not you could tell he's not putting on a facade or a mask or anything anything like that to impress people I've even I can tell that from even talking to him in the dms but you could tell he's really, really like a genuine person and that's what we mean when you when you when you get to know somebody behind the ideas that they try to throw out into the public and into the timeline, you can tell if a person is actually them or if they're, you know, if they have the mask on. Yeah, for sure. Especially if they're ever willing to appear on video, you know, like <laughs> if, if someone's claiming to be an alpha badass and then they can't come flex on the screen, <laughs> then they're probably not. <laughs> and if all they've got is a picture of them from behind, looking off into the distance on the beach with some nice big lats, but no facial features showing, it's probably not them. <laughs> yeah, bro, you can go on Unsplash and get stock photos. Like, uh, it's, it's uh, being, I learned very easily or very early in the Twitter game that being anonymous, it can only get you so far. As, I mean, uh, if you're trying to protect your, your, your uh, family or your job or career, things like that, I understand it. But a lot of people is just like, you're, that's only going to get you so far in terms of people really rallying behind you. Like if people want to connect a face, a person, to someone who actually feels genuine, not some 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 medieval painting from from the fucking fourteen hundreds. <laughs> some man's face, like God. Everybody uses those nowadays for the Abbey. Every mindset psychology person uses one of those damn medieval paintings with the person some swashbuckler and i'm just like do y'all get all of these from the same site <laughs> it's funny man <laughs> look here's here's what i think about anonymous accounts um if you're anonymous just because you want to be a dickhead um i'm not gonna have anything to do with you but if you're anonymous because like I, I'm friends with some anonymous people and they're just, they're anonymous because they're so smart that they get borderline paranoid and maybe they even have good reason to because they're involved with things. Mm -hmm. And so they, they're anonymous just like, look, I'm not, I'm not trying to be a personal brand. I'm not trying to have a million followers. I'm just doing what I'm doing here because I get a kick out of it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, fair enough. You know, like you're not coming around trying to, but then it's people who go around being a shit stir, just like, Oh, I'm a master of psychology. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a master of magic numbers, and I'm going to tell you a little thing about the way the world works. Uh, I know about that. <laughs> I, I see those kind of uh, those kind of piston matches and back and forth contests, and I, I tend to just kind of, yeah, I, I just tend to stay out of those because it's like, I'm, I'm the kind of person where I, I don't try to speak on things unless I'm like really, unless I really like went into it and tried to learn or well versed and things like that. There are also things that I really aren't interested or I'm not interested in learning about and getting too deep into. And, you know, the, the numbers is definitely one of those. Like, it's, it's cool if it suits you and everything. I'm not knocking anybody who does whatever, but that's just not like I'm the only numbers I'm trying to worry about are the ones in my bank account. I'm, I'm cool. Like, <laughs> I yeah, man. A, I'm trying to be a nine, nine, nine million life path. I'm like, 999 <laughs> million. That, that's my life path. Hell yeah. Yep. It's funny. <laughs> and not to not to get too derailed there i guess i just uh every once in a while i like to have a little chuckle about things and if you don't have a sense of humor about yourself that's more telling than most things so <laughs> i guess that's all i have to say about that <laughs> so uh 
I just uh, I just really got rather derailed with that because I lost my mind while I was laughing. <laughs> um, so you said you've been doing uh, freelance copywriting stuff, yeah? Yeah. How did you get your start doing that? Um, I actually first found out about it a few years ago on Twitter. I forget exactly who it was because I had – because it, I, I used to have a blog and I would write about like mindset and uh, psychology and things like that. I think actually most of my articles are still online somewhere, but I would write like things like that. And there was somebody who reached out to me one day and they uh, were asking if I had ever heard of copywriting and if I had ever heard of uh, like writing emails for businesses and things like that. And they started to explain it to me a little bit, but the way they explained it made it seem like completely different from how uh from how it like how I understand it now so I didn't really take too much heed to it because I didn't think it was something that would be as lucrative as it is and then afterwards I think it, I, I it, it was I was going through things in life and, and Twitter just wasn't doing it for me no more and I had taken hiatus actually for about six months uh and when I came back I was, found some new people and there I actually found there was a new corner of Twitter, the whole make money online corner. And I actually have to give credit to uh to Nate Schmidt because he actually is the one that put me on to copywriting again and the one that, that had me interested in looking into it like, oh oh this is what they were talking about before, but they never said nothing like that. Like he's the one who had me look into it and, and really focus on it and move forward with it. And it's actually been uh, essentially been a a, a bit profitable for me especially quite recently so it's one thing that but the thing about that is that in itself is a skill which is going to to is going to help me in pretty much everything that I'm trying to do for the future because pretty much everything I'm trying to do revolves around marketing or branding or building some some type of business and copywriting is typically understanding people and, and how to make them feel something so that they buy from you and if you're in a business where you're trying to sell things and you know that, then you kind of can't lose. Am I right? Yeah, man. And plus, I mean, you started going down that road, um, but everything you do connects to other things in your life. Maybe not everything in a large way. Um, in fact, I was just talking to my friend Fury about this yesterday, but like you can think of, you can think of a node and it's like a particular concept or idea or skill. And then it's directly connected to other nodes, like, you know, like a, like a channel in your brain. But then it also has these spheres of influence where it just generally impacts stuff. So like if you exercise, you get directly good at the ways that you exercise and then directly good at things that are very close. So like if you do a bench press and then you do a wide grip bench press and then you do a narrow grip bench press, for example, those three things will contribute much more to each other, then a shoulder press will contribute to a bench press and vice versa. They'll still help each other out, but it won't be as directly impactful as something that's closer along the lines. So you have these spheres of influence too, but let's say you get good at copywriting and then that develops your um, human psychology understanding and that develops your own intuition about the ways that you feel and how those connect to other people because you start to get feedback. And then you um, are able in your day-to-day -day life to understand what you are thinking and feeling to a greater degree and then to express those in real time to the people that you're trying to communicate with in a way that they'll understand and connect with so that you can have more of what you need to happen just in your regular life from understanding from the feedback of the copywriting uh, how people work and how you can get what you need out of them and usually not to get too like dark triad about that it's usually what happens is the way you get inside of their like framework is to offer to help them in a way that seems genuine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's definitely the case. Cause if you, most people, and then I feel like when it comes to understanding people and trying to, you know, like with the whole psychology aspect, understanding people and why people do things that they do and things of that nature, it helps you understand yourself a lot more because 
you yourself are a human. So if you understand the nature behind why humans do certain things, you start to look at things you, you might have done in the past or the way you look at things and be like, maybe this is why I feel such and such way about such and such. And then it makes it easier for you to, if you want to try to twist and, and, and you know, change up the way you think about things because you understand why you hold those viewpoints in the first place rather than somebody who just knows like, oh, well, when such and such happens, I'm mad. But you don't know why you're mad. So you don't know how to make it to the point where you can use the the emotion you feel from such and such happening in a more productive manner rather than just be getting angry and, and, and pissy and throwing a hissy fit and all of that. It's, uh, it's, a lot of it comes from the fact that like understanding people helps you get along with people and deal better with people more because that's what a lot of people who me my and I, I've learned this myself as a missing group I'm not really too keen on humankind in general people generally get the fuck on my nerves but when I'm when through, <laughs> like, through like my journeys with uh, copywriting and marketing and understanding why people do things in business type settings has helped me understand a lot more why people do things in social and personal type settings because the, the it, it helps you really like hammer down on and identify the reasons behind different human actions and interactions and at the end of the day it helps you really understand the world and yourself a lot better so this is a theme that has come out a lot on this podcast and um you know i obviously i think i shape a lot of what happens on here but and I've picked the people who come on here, but this is a theme that seems to come up again and again. And it's, it's interesting to me that um, whether I'm talking with um, like Bobby Dino talking about um, his experiences coming out of prison and how he's used the lessons he's learned there to come out and be successful in the world, or whether I'm talking to you about um, copywriting or whether I'm talking to like Joe Hart about, coaching his competitive cheer team and the lessons he's learned that he's bringing to online business or, you know, any of these people, PD Mangan talking about exercise and diet and combating a system that's trying to keep a certain status quo situation in place. It always comes down to, to be effective at whatever you're doing. You have to be able to communicate it to other people in a way that they want to be a part of it. You have to connect to them. You have to convince them to be on your team. And you have to make it an actual team in their eyes because people want to join a tribe or a team. They want to be a part of a thing. It's got to seem like it's a movement, and that that movement impacts their lives and that being a part of it will improve their lives and that there's parts small enough or big enough or whatever, whoever you're marketing to, that they can take part in it. That there's a place for them in it. And then here's how you do that and, and click here, you know? And so it's it's just very fascinating to me that almost every conversation I've had for this podcast and ever since I've come to Twitter, my focus and all the things that I've been receiving have all been about like, how can you connect to other people? Because it's like, I have stuff that I know is valuable uh, and I want to teach it, but I don't have a lot of people in my life because I'm kind of an asshole. You know, I just say things because I feel them and I think them. And then people don't like them sometimes and then they don't want to be my friend. And it's like, okay. okay. Uh, but I come to Twitter and it turns out that there's some people on Twitter who um, can like hear a criticism or something. And then they just go, oh yeah, that's a good point. I'll probably just go fix that now. Mm-hmm. And they go, oh, all right. I like this person. And, he's, mm-hmm. and you start to connect and you, you know, but it's a process. Like the, the compassion is a big part of it or the, or the empathy getting inside people's heads and, and sharing your life with them. And it's hard to do for people. It's scary. So I wonder, yeah, you go ahead, man. It looks like you got it. A lot of people, I was just going to say, a lot of people find it hard to make other people feel anything other than, you know, can this person leave me alone? So that's where they, they tend to mess up because they don't, you, you can talk to people and you can talk at people and such and such, but if you don't make anyone feel anything from what you're saying, then it's kind of just, a lot of times it's just like empty information. Well, it takes courage to open up to, you know, your, it's this weird thing we have where we have this person that we hold dear, like our highest version of ourselves, but 
maybe maybe we have maybe we've been mocked in our lives or maybe we've been taken advantage of or maybe we've been hurt or maybe we've been paralyzed by fear you know maybe we got yelled at as kids or maybe we got too easy of a life as kids all these things that people get wrapped up in Mm -hmm. and so they have this vision like man I really think I'm this person but then they don't act that way because their fears or their pain or their uh, you know doubt or their whatever get in the way and then it manifests as these things like laziness or is like you know stupidity or or you know just whatever willful blindness or or you know fighting for no reason mm-hmm. and it's it's sad and stuff but it's like uh, all you have to do to actually become that person that you're puppy guarding in your heart is just to let it out and share it with people and they'll help you even your enemies will help you if you find that you got wounded it's because you weren't protected and if you weren't protected it's because you didn't know about a weakness or if you did you didn't do what it took to prepare yourself to defend against it and then you learn i have to do this now because this is the point at which i got hurt and this is how i defend against that and then you move on you don't sit there and play the victim game so i mean you're a young dude but you've chosen into this and now you're jumping in with both feet and you have um, a lot of momentum and you have a lot of connections on twitter for example Uh, you have this email list you know etc etc so what are some of the things that you've used to get you past these layers of doubt and these layers where like should i keep pushing um should i give up now or should i like or am i even good enough to do this this kind of stuff what are the tools you've used to move beyond those places it's interesting that you mentioned that honestly because i just was getting it or i was just talking to someone recently about the fact that uh that like some of the things that i'm doing now i've kind of had feelings of over the over the time i've been doing them of you know is this something that i should keep doing like am i is it actually working for me am i wasting my time things like that and a lot of things when it comes to to uh, situations like that it's with people dealing with their own insecurities that's what people have a lot of issues with doing like people have a lot of issues with understanding the simple fact that all humans have flaws and weaknesses and and strengths and and you know everybody has things that they can do and can't do and people find themselves getting embarrassed by their insecurity people find themselves getting embarrassed due to insecurity about things that they feel they should be able to do that they can't or things that people do better than them or you know things like that and the main thing with me was just getting over all my insecurities like me I, i feel like I look at the past a lot and I look at things that I've done and I look at things that I know now and be like, damn, I wish I had known such and such back then because I did, did, could have did such and such back then and I would be in a, such and such better position right now and everything like that. But I can't, it came to a point where I realized that doing all of that was pointless because at the end of the day, you can't change the past. It already happened. And me sitting and dwelling on it and soaking about it and, oh, well, I should have did such and such. I mean, that's cool and all, but unless, you know, somebody makes that DeLorean from Back to the Future, it's, it's, it's no way that anything is going to change. So my a lot of my insecurities used to come from, you know, being or not wanting to be embarrassed by people pointing out flaws and people pointing out the fact that I, I, people pointing out positions that I myself feel like I should be in and, you know, things like that. But I had to realize that when it comes down to it, that I'm living my life for me, I'm living my life at the pace that I want to live it at. And if somebody else did such and such at a younger age than me or, or by the age that I'm at or anything like that, that doesn't really it used to affect me, but now it's just like, I mean, that's cool and all, that's good for them, but that doesn't mean that I can't do it. It was a scarcity mindset that I would be acting from a lot. Like, like I, 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 instead of thinking in my mind that, oh, they can do it, that means that I can do it too. I would think in my mind, like, oh, damn, they did it. So that means there's less of a chance for me to be able to succeed with it. And I don't understand why I even felt like that in the first place. It, it's probably due to the fact that, you know, insecurity makes you not, makes you a lot less rational in the first place because you're more so worried about not getting hurt and you know people not making fun of you and 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 not being embarrassed and and shame and things like that instead of the future and what could happen 
if you, you know, work on the things that you need to work on and fix the flaws that you have. A lot of people are so stuck on the past and the present that they don't even really think about how they can use the present to shape their future. They're so stuck on how the past shaped the present. And it's like, you can do that. You can keep looking back on what happened to such and such and blah, blah. But at the end of the day, the more you look back, the less time you have to focus on doing the things you have to do now to make the life that you want to make for the future. So I'm, it's, it's mainly just the fact that I can't let, and then a lot of people deal with opinions and shame and things like that from people who don't know them from a can of paint, people who they've never really had a conversation with, never hung out with a day in their life, never even seen in real life. Like all the, all the online stuff. It's not a single person or online that can make me feel bad or embarrass me or shame me or whatever. Because at the end of the day, I know every decision that I've made in my life. I'm, I, I know every single one. I've been there for every single one. You can't make me feel ashamed for something that I did, whether it's unintentionally or not. I mean, I did it. Like, I, I know that I did it. You mean it's in the past, but... I'm, if you're sitting there dwelling on the past and I'm focused on the future, then we're obviously on two different levels and I don't need to be paying you any mind. So, like, you can look at the past and look at things and see, you know, what you can fix and stuff like that. But if you're just looking at it as, oh, well, you did such and such back then and you're blah, 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 and this is such and such. I mean, that's cool, but you can take that mindset over there because I'm, I'm looking at the future and meanwhile, you still try to judge me for not even the present, the past. Uh, I, it's, it's just, I don't understand it. Yeah, man. That reminds me of this line from Aesop Rock, and he goes, it's, a, it's just part of this song, and he says, heavy load to bear. Party over here, I'll be over there. <laughs> and it's just, it's like, look, there's, there's, there's two basic ways of looking at the past. You can either say, these are all the reasons why I cannot or you can look at the past and you can say, these are all the ways that I should or should not. It's just like, it can be, it can be a collection of lessons. It can just be like a book of lessons for you. Like, you know, uh, I have it around here somewhere, but you got uh, Tim Ferriss's like tools of Titans, for example, all that is past. And almost all those stories have mistakes in them and then how they overcame the mistakes. That's what makes it a compelling story. But, you, you could look at that book and say, oh, look at all these mistakes these people made. I could never, you know, I could never do that. I could never face those mistakes. And you could let, you could let the fact that even them overcoming the mistake is a problem for you. I could never do that. That seems too hard. People have success. Like if you're a hundred pounds overweight, even if you don't want to be in good shape ever in your life, if you could get to 20 pounds overweight just by like, paying a little attention to what you put in your face, which you can, it's it, like you could do that, but you don't. So it's understandable then that when people look at their past and they are not currently willing to do what it takes to make a change, to shift directions, it, it becomes very easy for the past to become one of those things that is a collection of reasons why they can't do something. I was hurt here. I was hurt here. I was hurt here. My feelings were hurt here and here and here. I made this mistake and it crushed me. I made this mistake and it crushed me. I mean, and I can speak from experience. I used to live like that. You know, I was very hard on myself and I let my collection of mistakes build up and weigh on me. And the thing is like that never does go away. Your past is chained to your back and you pull it with you. So the question is, regardless of what you've done, regardless of where you've been, regardless of your past, are you going to be the kind of person who can carry it forward? Or are you going to be the kind of person who lets it hold you back? And the choice is yours. And it's, it's a choice in every moment. In every single moment, you have a choice in whether right now you're going to be the kind of person who chooses to step forward or get pulled back. And there's no other options. There's not standing still. That just isn't how things work. You're either moving forward or you're getting pulled back and it's your choice. And sometimes, you know, you run forward a ways and then you get pulled back most the other way because you haven't learned how to stay ahead of the game. But then you enter a new paradigm. Things look different. There's new people there. There's new skills that you have. There's a new understanding of how the entire world works. It's like standing on the top of a hill. You look down and the world looks a lot different from this new height. 
And eventually, you know, you can get to the top of the mountain and it's pretty lonely up there. It's not a lot of room on the peak, but when you get really good at something and you understand all the work it took to get there, the people at the bottom who have never even tried to get to the top, they sure don't matter a lot, especially when they look like ants from your vantage point. But that's a tricky slope too, because if you're looking down at everybody like they're ants, you can forget that they're just like you and they're on their own path trying to get right where you're at. And you can either go back down and bring people back up as a guide, or you can go and stiff arm people on your way down to the inevitable valley where you're going to be six feet beneath sea level, you know? So it's one of those things where they're like we talked about at the beginning, there's all these skills and tools that you can learn and it's awkward at first and that might stop you. And then you get good at them and then maybe you're not being true to yourself and that might stop you or shift you into a direction where um, you've been, you've been forced into being someone that you're not and it fucks with your head or you might take those tools and integrate them into who you really are and be a more powerful and actualized person. And the choice is yours. And so I wonder, it seems that you understand that at a pretty young age and we're all at our different levels and everything, but you're having success in an area where a lot of people have tried and failed. If you were sitting down across from someone, whoever's listening to this and looking them in the eyes, what, what's the most powerful thing that you've learned that you feel like you could tell them that would add to their life in general, or specifically if they're trying to do a business or whatever, whatever you want to tell the person listening right now. Um, my main thing would probably be for people to spend more time focusing on why things happen and not what exactly happened, because that's how you really get to the root of, of a problem and an issue and figuring out how to, to solve something. Like if you hit, if you get to the point where you hit a roadblock or you feel like, you know, you can't go any further or things like that, then you need to sit and understand what it is that's impeding your progress and why that's the case. Because it could be as simple as you needing to take the time and, and take a couple extra minutes and learn another skill that would, that would ex allow you to, you know, hop over that roadblock. It might take you needing to go back and review something that you already know and learn something new about it. It might take you looking in and realizing that it's something that you as a person are doing wrong due to your perception or, you know, how your own biases and things like that. It's really a whole thing of understanding what the reasons are behind, you know, your successes or your failures and then being persistent with it. Because like I said, I've, it took me, I, it took me I, like five or six months since I first started uh, trying to do, do like, I won't say heavy client outreach because I didn't really get to the point where I was sending like dozens of emails until about four or five months in, but it took me damn near half a year to even sign my first client from copywriting due to the fact that I wasn't, for the first, like for the, at first I was doing it and I was sending emails and not getting responses or getting news and I would just let it sit right there. I was just like, okay, well that's that. But it wasn't until after a while and I started realizing that I really need to hammer down and, and look into what exactly I'm seeing and, and how I'm presenting my services and how I'm making the person reading the email feel and get into the eye and get into the, to the shoes of the other, the person on the other side, because if you're doing something and you're trying to pitch something to a person or sell something to them or whatever, you need to take a second and look at it from their point of view. Like, okay, if I were reading this, how would this make me feel? How would I look at this? What perceptions or biases would make me look at this differently? Like this, it's a lot more psychological and a lot more, you know, reason based than people realize when it comes to when it comes to copywriting and marketing and, and all of that kind of stuff. It's a lot. It's highly psychological. Like if you don't understand the reasons and the methods to the madness, then, you know, you're kind of always going to be lost in the sauce because you're going to be focusing on how to do things and not necessarily why to do things. I think that's one of the big things when it comes to marketing people want to know the processes and the uh, not right long form copy and all of that kind of stuff. but it's just like you have to look at why people would even want to read this and go through it and and you know buy from you in the first place and that enables you to do a lot better so just to make sure i'm on the same page what what i feel like like so what you're saying is, number one, 
you have to be systematic and consistent in what you're doing. And you have to measure what you're doing too, because if you're not doing it consistently and you're not doing it within a system, then you're not going to get consistent results that you can measure, but then do measure and, and pay attention to what you're measuring too, because you might not be measuring the right things. Learn as you go along with that. And then on top of that, you need to develop, an understanding of psychology or getting inside people's heads or, or empathy especially is probably the tool mm -hmm. uh, that you're describing that I could understand best. Like if you can understand the effect that your words will have on other people by imagining that you are the other person receiving those words, mm -hmm. then you can raise your, like your power, your impact to the words that you're writing. Mm -hmm. So, so system, a consistent system measure, psychological tools and empathy so you can get inside of their head and then understanding what it is that you're even writing for not just what am i writing but why am i writing it and what am i trying to do so having a purpose or a vision a message right that's what it's at the analyzation step is a big part too because if you're just sending out if you're just sending out pitches and and, and reaching out to people and things like that and you're not going back and, and looking at oh well, what did i say here how can i improve this and make it sound more fluent and more congruent and you know how on this line maybe i could change this to say such and such and you know a b testing is really the key with uh, with a lot of this because you'll find that certain things work better with certain types of people or certain things work better in certain situations than others. And if you're just going around and trying to do, trying to sell everyone the same exact, or sell everyone the same exact way or sell everyone on the same exact stuff, then you're going to end up, you're, you're going to get a couple bites eventually. But what you're going to realize is that there are certain people who are more responsive to certain things. So you need to, you know, you need to be able to distinguish which is which and treat them and treat them accordingly. Because you can, you know, send out the same pitch email to a thousand people and do that uh, every day for a month. And da -da 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 -da. But at the end of the day, if you take the time to look back at what you're doing and see, you know, how things are working out, it's going to work better than you just sending them out and not paying any attention to anything you do unless you get a response. Because I feel like a lot of people when it comes to this, they do that. They just write their email pitch. They get a bunch of email addresses, send them out. And then that's that. If they don't hear back from them, they might follow up within a couple of days and, you know, do that again once or twice or they might just let it go and, and not contact them again. But a lot of people, I feel like they don't go back and look over what they've done to, to really analyze and think about. And then when you look at it after you've written it, you get a chance to view it from like the other person's point of view because you're not in the active writing stage it's more passive and you're reading and you could think oh well if i was such and such reading this then maybe they might think such and such about this it makes it easier than to try to do all of that while you're actually writing it out for sure i've done some copywriting for other people not that much um but some and i find it's a lot easier than doing my own copy because um when I'm, when I'm writing for somebody else, you know, I, I ask some questions, you know, what, what, what's the message you're trying to get across? What are the angles that you would like? Is there any specific things that you want me to talk about? Kind of like before this podcast, I said, is there anything you want to talk about or don't want to talk about? You know, you kind of, you ask these questions to get inside of, of the head of your client to try to get inside of the head of their client. And then you have these tools that you've learned and you go, okay, how can I get this message across most effectively? And you kind of look at it and because you're doing it for somebody else, it's, there's this, there's a separation of attachment, you know, where you're like, it's not like a message directly from your heart. You're trying to imagine somebody else's heart and write for it. So it's funny because, you know, my copy for other people has been a lot more successful than my copy for myself right now. And I'm going to go back in and do some stuff to some things I have available. But the point is like, I'm I'm going through this journey and learning these things and I have this catalog to rely on now that, you know, is more advanced than when I started and I still have, a, you know, an infinite amount of stuff to learn about it. But it's just interesting um, how just even a little small shift in perspective can deliver all these different results and, and how you can tie that into what you're actually trying to do inside. It's, it's just a trip how, how integrated copywriting is to so many other things in your life and how um, it's essentially like you realize at a certain point that you're speaking 
copy mm -hmm. where like everybody is all the time. And if you can communicate better verbally or, or in the written word, or when you're literally trying to sell something or you're just trying to sell an idea because we don't communicate just for no reason. There's always a reason behind what we're doing. You know, I'm talking to you for a reason. You're talking to me for a reason, or even a collection of them. And you know, hopefully people can take something from it, but we're each trying to get something out of this too. Mm -hmm. And so by understanding that and then being able to connect to people, it's just a cool experience. Um, so we're, we're a little more than an hour in at this point, man. And I think we've covered a lot of ground. Um, is there anything else that you would like people to hear from you or know about you before we kind of round things out? Um, not that I can think of. I think I've kind of covered most of most of who I am and what I do and how I think. I don't really think it's if if there's anything else that I could think of that anyone or if there's anything else that anybody would want to know about me that I can't think of. I mean, they could just ask me on Twitter or or something like that. I can't really think of anything right now. Hell yeah! Well. I really appreciate you taking the time to come on the podcast and um, I feel like there's going to be a lot of valuable information here for people to, to pick up on, you know? So um, I'm, yeah, man. And I'm grateful to you for taking the time. I know you're busy and um, I appreciate it a lot. No doubt. Let me know if you, you know, I'm, I'm always here to, to uh, help people who reach out to me. That's one thing that people, oh, well, that might be one thing. That's one thing that people might not understand or might not get from, you know, my timeline presence and how I act is I'm very helpful. And, you know, if you reach out to me and, you know, I've, I've had a couple people reach out to me in my DMs and be like, oh, Adonis, uh, could you help me? Or can I get your opinions or your, your thoughts on such and such? And it's like, I'm not one of those kind of people where you ask me for uh, help or you ask me what you should do for something. And I just send you a PayPal link. Like, I'm, I'm a real, uh, you know, helpful and generous kind of person. So I'm always willing to you know, look out for people and, and if they need something, then just reach out. And if I can, I'm, you know, why wouldn't I? I'm, I'm not one of the kind of people where I have it, have it within my means to help someone. And I'm just like, well, I don't feel like it, especially if it's just knowledge or information. I'm not really one of those kind of people. So, yeah, if there's if you or anyone watching this, you know, I need to reach out for anything, feel free to. Hell yeah, man. I appreciate that. And same for me, by the way, my valued listeners, reach out and talk to me any, any old time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so look, Adonis, why don't you remind them one more time where they can find you? I'll still put it in the show notes and everything, but give yourself a shout out and uh, shout out anybody else you want to. Why not? Let's have, let's have some shout outs. <laughs> um, I'd like to shout out my mom. I mean, give me some <laughs> But no, um, yeah, I'm I'm really mainly active in three places. I um I'm I'm articulate, and you mean I share my knowledge on Twitter at Lord Adonis. Um, try to be funny, and you know things like that on Instagram. It's Lord Adonis on there too, and then you can find my uh my writing and my blog posts and things like that on AdonisBravo.com. That's mainly the three places that I deal with online as far as my content. So. Oh, yeah, man. Well, thanks again for coming on the Logo Centrifugal Podcast. It's a great talk. I think people are going to find a lot of value in it. And uh, have yourself an excellent rest of your weekend, bro. You too, my man. It was a great talk.